Welcome to the Mentally Stronger podcast, the podcast where with every episode, we're learning practical ways to let go of stress and struggles, grow our mental strength, and live a happier, healthier, more meaningful life. I'm your host, Millie O'Brien, co-founder of mindfulness.com and creator of the Deep Resilience Method. I'm so glad to have you here with me today. Let's dive in to today's episode. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to unsubscribe from your thoughts. First, I just want to give you a little bit of context. So the human mind is a double-edged sword. On the upside, having a human mind enables us to plan for the future, solve problems, create goals and the steps to work towards them. But the dark side of the human mind is that it also tends to haunt our inner world with unhelpful and painful thoughts. We experience things like self-criticism, we experience rumination, worry. For many of us, that voice inside can become our own worst enemy sometimes, crushing our self-esteem, driving us to feel constantly stressed, negative, or anxious. Now, We know that with email or on social media, if we find some of the content coming through unhelpful, then we can hit the unfollow or the unsubscribe button. But the original meaning of the word subscribe means to express or feel agreement with something. So to unsubscribe from something means not to express or feel in agreement with something. Now, the reason why we often get caught up in unhelpful thoughts is because we subscribe to them. That is, we totally agree with them. We take our thoughts seriously. We, we, we believe them. We mistake them for reality. Now, the, there's a name for this in psychology. It's called cognitive fusion, meaning we are fused with our thoughts. Now, cognitive fusion is unhelpful because when we are fused with our thoughts, we are totally entangled. We're hooked by them, right? So they almost have a hypnotic effect on us. In cognitive fusion, we mistake our thoughts for reality. Let me give you a simple example. Let's say you wake up in the morning, one morning, you open your eyes and you see that it's raining outside and the mind comes in and says, oh, what a dreadful day. Now, if you believe that thought, you might be emotionally reactive immediately, right? You're going to start to feel like depressed or stressed or just low mood. You take them literally. So instead of seeing that it's just raining, you take it literally like it's a dreadful day. And, And if you really believe it's a dreadful day, you will probably mope around all day repeating this thought, it's a dreadful day. You'll be in a bad mood all day and you'll have a dreadful day. So you play it out right? So you mistake the thought for reality. Without the thought, it's a dreadful day. It's simply raining. You might even sit there and enjoy the sound of the rain on the roof, right? So cognitive fusion can really have a big effect on us. But cognitive defusion is where we are not hooked with our thoughts. So in cognitive defusion, we're having a thought, but we don't automatically believe the thought. We just know that it's just a thought. It's just a bit of language going through the mind. We don't automatically obey the thought or play it out. We only listen to it if it's useful or helpful. We don't emotionally react to thoughts because we know that it's just a mental event. So we see the difference between thoughts and reality. So in the dreadful day example, let's just say, you know, you wake up in the morning You open your eyes, you see that it's raining, and then you see the thought, oh, what a dreadful day, kind of arise in the mind and then pass. And you're free to just lay there and listen to the rain. You don't actually believe it's a dreadful day. You just know that you just had the thought. (laughs) Your mind just generated the thought that it's a dreadful day, but it's not actually dreadful and you know that. So this is a really big difference, a really powerful thing to be able to do, to be able to go from a state of cognitive fusion to a state of cognitive defusion. In other words, unsubscribing from your thoughts. So I'm going to give you a short practice now to help you unsubscribe from any unhelpful thoughts that come up. 
And it, what it does is it just takes the power out of them. It helps you defuse from them so that they no longer cause you stress, emotional reactivity, and suffering. So this is actually a practice from acceptance and commitment therapy. And it's really simple. It's just called thinking the mind. So here's how you do it. It's actually a really fun practice. So whatever your mind says to you, no matter how negative it is, no matter how dramatic it sounds, no matter how awful it is or critical of of you it is, just with an attitude of playfulness and warmth and even humor, you simply say to yourself mentally, thanks mind, thanks for sharing. So if your mind says, you're such an idiot, you simply mentally reply to yourself, thanks mind, thanks for sharing. <laughs> Maybe then your mind says, what, what, what's going to happen if no one looks after me when I'm old? It's going to be horrible. You just reply, thanks mind. And if your mind says, this stupid thanking the mind thing doesn't change the fact that your life sucks and you're an idiot, you're kidding yourself, <laughs> right? And you simply say, thanks mind. So what you're doing in this practice is you're just in a way, acknowledging that that is just a thought that your mind is generating, right? Because your mind just goes on in the background all day, analyzing things, labeling things, giving you opinions and (laughs) commentating your whole life and spouting out a whole bunch of judgments. But it's, it's just your mind prattling on. So this is a way of you just kind of acknowledging that's just your mind prattling on. So today I invite you to just take this practice with you So you're going to take this into your week ahead. This is your mental strength practice for the week. And any and every time you find yourself getting caught in any kind of unhelpful thought, just have a play around with this. Remember to do it with warmth and with humor, with a little bit of playfulness. So no matter what your mind says to you, no matter how serious it claims to be, see if you can have a sense of kind of smiling at the mind and just mentally saying, thanks mind. And then change your focus of attention back to something more nourishing. And that might be simply refocusing your attention on what you're doing in the present moment, right? Tasting your tea, listening to the rain, typing on a computer, driving in a car or talking to another person. Or you might just like to change your thoughts in a different direction as well. Gratitude, self-compassion or more positive thinking styles. For example, in the example of the rain, Instead of saying, it's a dreadful day, you can say, thanks, mine. Thanks for sharing. And then you could switch the thought to, you know, I'm actually really grateful for this rain. It's nourishing our gardens and filling our water tanks. And actually, what a beautiful day, (laughs) right? So each time you do this practice, you build your capacity to unhook from unhelpful thoughts and bring more lightness, more intention, more ease into your days. So Really encourage you to give this a try. It's a simple practice that's really, really helpful. I hope it's really beneficial for you. Thanks for being here and listening to this podcast and and being part of a community that's practicing becoming mentally stronger. It really is a gift. Not only a gift that you give to yourself, but you know, to everyone that you know and everyone you meet and ultimately contributes in some way to a happier, more peaceful and stronger world. All the best with it. And I'll be with you again on the next episode of the Mentally Stronger podcast. If you know someone who you think might benefit from listening to this episode, share it with them. Sharing it could really help them to feel better and improve the quality of their life. And if you found this episode helpful, remember to subscribe to the podcast so that you can receive more tips on growing your mental strength and you can keep practicing along with us every week. If you are wanting more support in becoming mentally stronger, come over to my website and take a look at all the coaching and training options that I have there for you. And I also have a bunch of free resources, including a five-day mental strength challenge that you can begin right away to kickstart your mental strength, improve your mental well-being, as well as your happiness and resilience. You can find all the links for this in the show notes. Thanks again for tuning in. Take care and stay strong.